Okay, hi everybody and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology, data analysis and visualization. So in this screencast we're going to be looking at how we can use um, Python to create figures. So what we want to look at today is to be able to create the framework to make a figure using Python and this package called Views, V-E-U-S-Z. We're going to use this to make a histogram as an example of the, the sort of figure that we might want to make um, in a, a psychology um, experiment or the outcome, the data that we have from a psychology experiment. We also want to know how we can change the formatting details of a figure, really make it look um, what we call publication quality. And we're going to have a, a bit of a, a look at the different um, file formats that we can save a figure in and how we can actually go about doing that in Python. Okay, so we'll switch to Spider as usual. Okay, so the first thing we need to consider is how we go about constructing a figure using Python and Views. So Views is an external package to Python. So as you know, we need to first um, import it to get this functionality. So for Views, we actually need a, a sub package that's called Embed. So what we do is we start off by having our import command import views dot embed okay so now we have this views functionality available to us so the first thing we need to do is to make a views window that we can draw to so we can do that using um, a function called embedded so what we're going to do is define a variable called embed which is equal to the view views dot embed dot embedded so now this function uh, takes an argument which specifies the window's title. So we don't really need to provide this, but let's set it to be views. So now what this is going to do is create a views window, and it's going to um, be uh, assigned to the variable embed. Okay, so what we'll do then is, just add a comment, what we're going to do is to really do all of our drawing and formatting in here. So we're going to build up our figure by um, using commands that operate on this views window. Then once we've done all that, we're going to run this command called wait for close. So this command tells views to, um, so we've opened our, our drawing window here, we're going to do all our drawing operations, then we're telling views, well, show what we've done wait for us to close the window before finishing the program. So what we can do is, is save this and run it and just have a look at what we've got. So what we get is just a, a blank window. So this is going to be our canvas. We're going to use this to draw our figure. So you can see it's just waiting. We, we can just look at it for as long as we want and then when we're ready we can close the window and the program finishes. All right, so like I mentioned, what we're going to do is uh, gradually uh, accrue our figures structure by running commands associated with this embed data. So the first thing we want to do is add a page. So this is going to define the, the dimensions of, of our figure. So let's, let's pretend that we're preparing a figure for publication in a journal. So these can normal, normally occupy either one or two columns of a printed page. So this is normally with a, a figure width of about 8.4 centimeters or 17.5 centimeters. So what we want to do first is we want to make a one column figure. So we need to um, add our page and set some of these uh, properties. So the first thing we do is create a variable called page, which we do by using the embed. And then we look at the, the root property of embed. And then we have a function called add. We give this a string called page. So what we're saying here is we're asking views at the, the very root, root of our embed variable to add a page and allocate that to the variable we're calling page. So now we have page, we can set some of its properties. So the first thing we're going to set is its width. Now what we do, we have the, the variable we want to set, width, and then we follow with a, with a dot val. And it's this dot val that we set to our desired um, quantity. So here for the width, we want it to be 8.4 centimeters. So we're specifying this as a string. 
so both the number and the units. So over there, let's give it a height. Val equals, let's make it six centimeters high. Okay, so now we've added a page to our drawing window. We've set its height, we've set its width. We save it and run it. Okay, so now we have our window again, but we have a um, white region in here, which is our page. Okay, so we close it and it finishes. All right, so we've got our page. So the thing to do now is to add our basic graph to it. So what we're going to do is, there's a variable called graph equals, now we're operating on our page. We're going to use a function called add. So now we're adding to the page a graph. And we're also going to use another argument called auto add equals false. So if we didn't have this, the, the graph would automatically have some axes added to it. But what we want to do, we want to add our axes separately. So now we're going to define an x axis equals graph.add axis and y axis equals graph.add axis. So you can see how we're building up the structure here. So we started off with a, a root and we added a page to that. Now from the page, we're adding a graph. Now from the graph, we're adding some axes. So we have this hierarchy of, of figure elements um, that could form our eventual overall figure. And we can save this and run it and see where we're up to. All right, so now we're starting to look like a bit of a figure. We have an axis for the x-axis, we have an axis for the y-axis, and we're, we're ready to actually um, fill in with some data. Okay, so how do we go about specifying the data that we want to show? So what we're going to do in this lesson is to make a histogram. So we've been using random numbers um, a fair bit in these lessons. What we're going to look at here is looking at the distribution of random samples drawn from a Poisson distribution. So the details of this aren't important. We're just using it here because it involves integers, which are, are easier for us to use in a histogram. So we can draw these samples using the function from NumPy called random.poisson. So as you know, when we're using NumPy, first thing we need to do is import it, import NumPy as MP up the top. Okay, but while we're working out the details of this data generation, let's save it and open up a new file and save it. And we'll save it as figures. Awesome. And we'll just have a look at how this data creation works independent of our figure. So we're going to start by importing NumPy as NP. Now we need to define the number of samples we want to um, generate. So here we're going to do 100. And we're going to generate them into a, um, a variable called samples. So samples equals np.random.poisson. Now we're going to, this Poisson needs some parameters, so we're just going to fill those in, don't worry about this. So the lambda, don't worry about the why it's for, but we need to give it the size, which is our n samples. Okay, so now let's save this and run it and see what we get out. All right, so now here is our, um, our array of random uh, integers that's drawn from this Poisson distribution. Okay, but this, for our figure, where we want a histogram, we need to do something to this data. So at the moment we have um, a list, an array of these um, integer sam samples, but what we actually want is the, um, the count. So we want um, a set of bins and we want to count the number of samples that lie within that bin. So we can use a function called bin count in NumPy to count how many samples correspond to the range of integers that are present in the samples. Okay, so we can do something like bin counts equal mp dot bin count samples. Let's save it and run it. Actually, forgot to print it. Print bin counts. Save it and run it. 
Okay, so now what this is telling us is the number of samples corresponding to each of the different integers. So now what we need to know was, well, well what integer do each of these array items correspond to? And we can get this by looking at bins equals mp.a range. So we're making an array range to we use this function called max to get the maximum value of our samples. And it's one more than that. So print bins, we save it and run it. Okay, so what it's telling us is that in this ar random sample array, we had one occurrence of the number zero. And you can see it up here. We had seven occurrences of the number one, 19 of two, 19 of three, 21 of four, and so on. So now this is what we can use then to make our histogram. So you can think of this um, bins here as being our horizontal axis and this bin counts as being the vertical axis in our histogram. Okay, so now we want to fold this back into our figure. So in our figure, let's go back. So we've just added our axes. So now what we want to do is depict our histogram using a bar graph. So this is a conventional way to display the kind of count data that we have in a histogram. Okay, so what we want to do is add another element to our graph. We're going to call it bar equals graph.add and we're going to have a graph type called bar. Now what we need to do is, is fold back in our data. So let's go to the other file where we've made this data. We'll copy it and paste it into our figures. So we'll put it, put it right up the top here, um, even before we make our um, embed. So let's put them all together. Okay, so now we've got our number of samples, generating the samples, counting our, in our bins, and working out what the bins are. Okay, so now we have our data. What we need to do is, is tell um, views about our data. So we do this using a um, function called, as part of embed, it's called set data. So now the set data takes two arguments. First one is our name for it. So what do we want to refer to this particular set of data as? So this is a string. And we're going to call it bins. And the second is the data itself. So we, we've also called it bins. So let's think about what this is doing. So we know we have bins here, which is an array, which is this one here. What we're doing here is telling views, okay, we have this data array called bins. I want you to be aware of this data and I want you to be able to refer to it by the string bins. Now we do the same thing, but this time for bin counts. So set data, bin counts. And again, a variable is the same name. Okay, so now views internally knows about this data. We can use it to, to set some properties of our bar graph. So the first one we're going to set, we're going to set bar.posn, so position.val equals bins. This is important. So this is the position on the horizontal axis we're going to be using the data that we've told views is, a, is referred to by the string bins, which is our data array of bins. So this sets the horizontal axis. Now what we want to set is the height of the bars, which views refers to by the property called lengths. But val equals bin counts. So now what we're saying to views is, okay, set the position of each bar corresponding to the data that we're referring to bins, which is the array bins. Set the height of each bar to be the, um, the string bin counts, which we've told you refers to the data contained in the array variable bin counts. Okay, so now we can save this and run it. And so now we're starting to get somewhere. So now we have our histogram of these, these random draws from this Poisson distribution. 
So you can think of he was setting the position to be the bins. So this is these points on the horizontal axis here. We're setting the lengths to be bin counts. This sets the vertical extent of each of these bars. All right, so now what we want to do is start improving the figure's appearance. So what we're aiming for here is a, a publication quality figure. So a really nice looking figure that really cleanly communicates the information that we want it to. So again, we use views to gradually build up these different elements and to set the properties of the figure. Okay, so we close our window. So now the first thing we want to do is to add some axis labels. So we don't really know what these samples represent in this example. We're just generating the random numbers. So let's just give them some generic names. Okay, so we've got our x-axis and y-axis variables. So what we can do is set x-axis.label.val to be value. So now what we're saying is the label that gets assigned to the x-axis, give it the string value. The label that gets assigned to the y-axis, let's call it count. Okay, so we've made a couple of changes here. Save it and run it. Let's see the result. All right, pretty straightforward. Now you can see the axis now have these two labels corresponding to the X and Y axis labels that we provided. All right, so now let's have a bit of a closer look at our graph and think of some of the other things that we could do. So a few possible changes are, well, this minimum probably isn't ideal because we can't see some of this bar. So maybe we could increase or decrease the minimum value of this axis a little bit just to make sure, make this bar a bit more visible. We could also do the same at the, at the maximum extent. Um, what else? So these little minor ticks in here, they don't really add much to the graph. So let's get rid of them. The major ticks, let's make sure we have one major tick for every um, number. We've got enough room for that. Um, we don't really get much from having this mirrored axis, axes up and down here. So let's, let's get rid of those. Um, what else? So at the moment, these tick labels are pointing upwards. So that might interfere with our ability to see quite low values. So let's flip them around the other way. So we can do all these changes by um, setting different values of the views data. So let's start working on this. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to set the minimum value of the x-axis. So we can do this by x-axis.min.value. So let's set it to slightly less than zero, set it to minus 0.5. Okay, so now we want to set the maximum value, max.val equals. So we're going to have to think about this a little bit because the maximum value is going to depend on how the maximum number of the maximum bin in our current sample. So we don't know that ahead of time, so we need to calculate it. So what we'll do is use the numpy function max to work out the maximum um, bin number. We'll add 0.5 to that to give it a bit of tolerance like we did at the minimum. Now one final thing we need to do is views can be quite picky about the type of data that you give it. So at the moment because we're using this numpy um, function and the, what will be returned is a numpy uh, data type whereas what views wants is a Python data type. So all we do is we convert it using a function called float. So this will take in our NumPy data and it will return it in a, in a Python friendly format. Okay, so the other thing we wanted to do was to get rid of these minor ticks. So we can use this minor ticks property, the hide property of that dot val, and give it a boolean true. So now what we're saying is these minor ticks on the x-axis, let's set this property called hide, which makes them invisible, to true. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to set the location of the major ticks. What we wanted is for there to be one tick at each bin value. So we can do that by x-axis.major ticks 
and we can use a property called manual ticks dot val. So what this takes is a, a list, so a, a list of data points that specifies the horizontal location of each tick mark. So we already have this in bins, but we have it as a NumPy array, whereas what views wants is a list, so we can use the toList function of bins to um, return the array array in a list format. Okay, so we're, we're making progress now. A couple of other things we wanted to do. So x-axis dot auto mirror dot mirror val equals false. So this is going to turn off that automatic mirroring of the x-axis. And finally, we're going to do x-axis dot outer ticks dot val equals true. So this one is going to flip our um, tick direction so that they point outwards rather than inwards. All right, so we've made quite a few changes here. Let's save it and run it and see how it's affected our figure. All right, so now you can see our, our horizontal axis is starting to look a bit nicer. So we've got um, our tick labels pointing outwards. We can see the whole bar here. We can see the whole bar here. We've got getting rid of all those little annoying little minor ticks. We've got a major tick for each number and it's all, all looking quite good. Okay, so now we need to do a few things to the y-axis. Not as many things I don't think here. We just want to get rid of these minor ticks. We'll um, get rid of this mirrored axis and we will flip the direction of the ticks. So we can do that by rather than referring to x-axis, now we refer to y-axis and minor ticks.val, sorry, hide val equals true, just like we did before, axis.auto mirror val equals false, we'll turn that off, y-axis.outer ticks.val equals true. Okay, so now we've done the, the, a few of the similar sort of things, but to our vertical axis. Let's save this and run it. Have a look. Okay, so now our vertical axis is looking a bit cleaner as well. A few other things we might want to change. First is that this box around the outside isn't really adding much value, so let's get rid of that. So we can do that by... So this, gra this box is a property of the graph, so we can do graph dot, it's called border dot hide dot val equals true. So we're telling views, okay, you have this border on the graph, I want you to hide it. Save it and run it. All right, so now it's looking a bit better. We've lost that border. So I might notice that these bars are changing each time I run it. That's because each time we run it, we're um, creating, generating a new random sample. So these bars are going to change each time. Okay, so one last change we might want to do is here, um, we, we might not like the font that we're showing here. Um, rather than a serif font, we want to show it in a sans serif font like Arial. So let's go back and let's make it, just for make it easier, let's give ourselves a variable called typeface and it's called Arial. So that's what we're going to change the font of our um, axis labels to. So now what I want to introduce is this idea that we want to apply this change to both the horizontal and vertical axes. So one way I could do this is type the command separately, so setting the font for the x-axis, setting the font for the y-axis. But a, a really um, a nice way to do this is to instead use a loop and just write the commands once. And that way, if we need to actually change anything, it's, it's a lot simpler. So we're going to do a for loop and we're going to call it current axis in x axis y axis. All right, so what we're going to do here, we have a, we've made a list comprising two elements, our horizontal and our vertical axes. Each time through the loop, it's going to in turn be assigned to this variable called current axis. So the first time through the loop, current axis will be the x-axis. Second time, current axis will be the y-axis. 
each time we want to set the label font to be what we've called our typeface. So what we're going to do, remember before we set the uh, label to a particular value, so now we're going and changing a property of the label, its font to be Arial. We want to also change the font of the tick labels, so the numbers, so we use tick labels dot font dot val equals type face. Alright, so now for both the horizontal and vertical axis we're going to be changing the uh, typeface or the font of the X of the um, label and the tick labels. Alright, so save it and run it. Great, so now in our figure we have these nice um, Arial font face used to make our labels and our numbers here. Okay, so I think we've ended up with a nice looking figure here. So what we want to do is save it to a format that we can then include in a document. So really the main decision we need to make here is whether to save it in so-called a vector format, which is something like PDF or SVG, or a bitmap format, which is something like PNG or JPEG. So a vector-based format stores the components primarily as shapes. So this can uh, allow us to have a smaller file size generally and allow us to have um, really high resolution at multiple scales. So it zooms really nicely. So the downsides are that not all software supports this. Uh, Word is one prominent example, I think. And there's some things that, it, that these vector formats struggle with, things like transparency. So the alternative is this bit-based formats like PNG and this creates a pixel by pixel representation. So when we do this um, bitmaps, we want to create them with a high DPI, which is dots per inch, so they have a nice high quality when they're printed. Okay, so let's save our figure to a few different formats. So we can do this by using the embed export function. So what we give it is a name, so we'll call it Poisson PDF, and we'll give it a, use this property called back color to sp specify the color of the background as white. So now it's going to um, save uh, the figure that we've made to this file called Poisson.pdf. Now we're also going to export it to the um, to a PNG file. So we can do the same thing, export, but now we use Poisson. Dot PNG. And we're going to use the argument here, DPI, and we'll set it to 600. So this is the sort of number you would use if you're actually going to be using this uh, in a publication. Alright, so now we can save this and run it. Okay, it's generated our figure, it's saved the files, now it's waiting for us. So now we can quit out of that. Okay, so now if we open Windows Explorer and go to the location that we um, ran the code from, you can see that it's created these two files, the PDF file and the PNG file. So if we open up the PDF, we can see that there is our figure. Same thing if we open up our PNG, there's our figure. Saved to files, we can then use them in our, our documents. Okay, so let's go back to the objectives from today's screencast. First we wanted to be able to create this framework for making figures using Python and this package called Views. Then we want to learn how we can create a histogram. So we looked at how we can use this bin count func function of NumPy, how we can use a, a bar graph in Views to visualize it. We also looked about how we can change some of the details, the formatting details of a figure and also talk a little bit about the different figure file formats and how we can actually save figures in views. Okay, I'll see you in the next screencast.